Hello and welcome to another weekly reading vlog. I'm currently in Buxton in, I want to say the Peak District. Yes, it is the Peak District because there are peaks here and there are no lakes. Um, I'm on holiday with my mum. It is the middle of all this, all this coronavirus stuff. I've seen people on my booktube subscriptions who are like actually quarantined at home effectively under like, you know, 100 million Europeans apparently are all under I mean, what is effectively house arrest, but it's obviously isolation um, to try and stop the spread of this thing. But yeah, I'm 150 miles away from home and my cat. My mum's actually probably 70 miles away from home or something, I don't know. So it's very stressful. So yeah, the government has been advising people not to go out unless it's absolutely necessary. And meanwhile, I am on holiday. So we're gonna go out. It is necessary to go out while you're on holiday, right? Um, yeah. So tomorrow, when it's a bit lighter, I'll give you the grand tour. I can give you a tour of my incredibly messy current bedroom. This is some stuff I'm going to haul in a minute, because I went to the charity shops today. Again, necessary uh, stuff down there. This is my unmade bed. This all here. There we go. That's my driver's license on the floor. Probably shouldn't lose that. Some stuff over here. Yeah. So this is my room. The Wi-Fi doesn't stretch into here, but I was sitting in here last night. I can get my 3G. I can get 3G so I can, oh shit, so that I can, so that I can watch Red Dwarf in bed. There's also a new movie of Red Dwarf coming out soon. If you haven't heard of Red Dwarf, check it out. Cool British sci-fi comedy, my favorite show ever. I mean, if you start from the very first series, that was like 1988, so it looks very old school, but as you get into the more modern series, the effects and everything get a lot better. But yeah, I fucking love that show. And weirdly enough, I was sitting there watching it last night and the episode was called Quarantine. Mr. Flibble says, game over, boys. You're not going to understand that unless you've watched it. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I'm on holiday. Uh, the last, at the end of my last vlog, pretty much the last thing in it was the uh, Sunday Jam at the Rose and Crown. And so I went along and played at that. And then on Monday, I travelled here. It is now Tuesday. Um, so yeah, when yesterday was all about the travel really. Today we went into Buxton and went around. I didn't take my camera because I forgot to charge it, but I will take it tomorrow when I believe we're going to Bakewell, even though the government advice is basically stay at home, don't go to the pub, don't go around public places. So I'll be walking around with my mask on, which is this. Um, yeah, so because of all this coronavirus stuff, basically like everything's cancelled all of the music in Wickham is pretty much off some of the pubs are still open I mean obviously I'm not even there um, in fact I think all of the pubs are still open but all the music events and stuff have all been cancelled so no more open mics and all that stuff also I was due to be starting next Monday my new job part-time job working as a bar type bar manager at the art center so I'll be running the bar um, you know being at events and stuff yeah so that's been cancelled, so I've been made redundant before I even started because they've got no bookings, which is fair enough to those guys. Freelance stuff is kind of okay. There's normally a lag though, which is the problem, so I'll probably do all right for the next couple of weeks and then that's when it'll start getting tough. Um, but yeah, the government's on about tax advice and loans and all this shit and it's just like, uh, I might actually have to apply for some stuff to be able to afford my rent and food, you know, if uh, if everything slows down. See, this is the thing, the other thing is I'm supposed, to, I was supposed to be starting hosting a new radio show a week today, and um, I don't know what's happening with that, I'm still waiting to hear back from people, so that could be interesting, um, but it's possible. So my three big pieces of news over the last month or so that have been really kind of helping me get out of this little bit of a funk and stuff, you know, the post breakup funk and all that stuff. So the three big things were my new book, which hopefully is still being released on April 10th. I actually emailed my publisher specifically to ask and be like, are we, are we still doing this? So hopefully that's still coming out. Uh, my radio show on Wickham Sound, which is probably not going ahead now, but I'm waiting to hear back. And my art centre job, which is definitely not going ahead now. And it's this bloody coronavirus, isn't it? I mean, I don't know, it sucks. I was so excited like a month ago about all this really cool stuff that was coming up. And now, I mean, I do still have a book launch. If that gets pushed back, mate, I'm gonna go crazy. I'm also probably gonna go crazy just being alone at home all the time. Um, I'm thinking about doing some live streams of me playing some music to kind of emulate the open mic experience, I guess. 
and you know just get myself out there entertain you guys uh, me and my friend joe we're probably gonna set up some uh skype calls or facetime or whatever because she lives alone as well you see so when you're on lockdown and you live alone i don't want to not see anyone for two weeks it's bad enough not seeing anyone for two days that's it really sets my anxiety and stuff off so a little bit worried about that but uh all in all hey ho i mean <laughs> uh i was riding so high at the end of 2019 and then we had this massive kick in the balls at the start of february and then it's like oh everything's perking up everything's gonna be fine and then it's like no global pandemic thank you global pandemic so, um, I mean, on the plus side, I guess I'll get to do lots of reading. I have, since I've been here, I have just finished reading Cuckoo Song by Frances Hardinge. I started reading it on the way here. Actually, surprisingly dull. This is my third of her books. The first one was The Lie Tree, which I enjoyed. The second one, I can't remember what it was called, but I remember it was freaking badass. It was better than The Lie Tree. Um, and then... This third one just wasn't very good. It didn't really grip me. The first 100 pages or so, I actually zoned out. So then I didn't know what was happening because, yeah, it all went a bit mental. It was, as always, beautifully written. But um, also, it's kind of very fairy tale-ish. More fairy tale-ish than her other books. I would say her other books are more like magical realism slash historical fiction. Whereas this was more like a contemporary fairy tale. Um, if you've read something like Stardust by Neil Gaiman, it's kind of similar to that. But again, I didn't like that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I gave that a 3 out of 5, and I also finished my bedtime book, which was David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell, which I also gave a 3 out of 5 to. Basically the whole point of it is that more nimble companies and people tend to outperform less nimble ones, and it's like, well yeah, no shit. And he actually even pointed out at the start, it was like, David was the favourite when it was David versus Goliath, because David was trained to use a sling, Goliath had his sword and his armour, and so basically was this slow moving sitting duck. There was no way Goliath was ever going to get near enough to David. David would just hit him a few times with a sling. You have to bear in mind that slings were used in battles. You know, um, it's like shooting someone with a bow and arrow. You're going to kill him. So he kind of made that point. And then it was just 300 pages of him coming up with example after example to prove his point. And it's like, but I already believe it. it's like, it's obvious. You know what I mean? It's like, as soon as I read the concept of the book, I'm like, well, yeah, no shit, mate. Of course. So, uh, yeah, so that's finished. Uh, next up, I might read, I've got this Ted Hughes book of poetry, uh, which I picked up today. I need to do a little haul, actually, but my battery icon's flashing, so I'll have to go in a minute. Um, but yeah, I might start this Ted Hughes poetry collection, blitz through that, and then I've got Desperation by Stephen King, which is one of the bigger ones. Uh, or, actually, it's only like 500 pages, but it's a massive hardback, you know? So I brought that with me because I was trying to start my longest unread book whenever I'm away. So I'll probably start that before I leave and then carry on reading it on my way home and then finish it when I'm self-isolating. I have no plans to self-isolate yet. I just don't think I'm going to be out much, you know. Yeah, this is the problem when, as well, because all of my friends, we just meet up at pubs. So it's not like I can't even really go to someone's house because it would just be a bit weird. Oh, I don't know. I've also been doing these puzzle at arrow words, so this has been fun. So yeah, tomorrow I will try and give you an... I've been talking for like 10 minutes already. Tomorrow I'll try and give you an update. I'll try and film some footage while we're out in Bakewell. And I'll also try and give you a little bit of a tour of where we're staying. I've uh, been doing some work today. Yeah, so it's going alright, really. I've got beer as well, so I've got that. That's where we're at. So yes, so my next move... I guess I've got to film some wrap-up stuff. I've got to finish my Francis Hardinge review. I've got to film my haul. And I think that's it. Boom. Book room this way. Yeah, you'll be all right. I think. You might not get back down, but you can wait it yeah, out. Getting up, getting down, I'm all right. uh, oh, hello! There's vinyls on the walls. Oh, this is a bit cool. Yeah. Ah, stack of vinyls. I think I might start with the vinyls because. 
Mm. Coming over. You're not having my sourdough. There's one in Paris as well, isn't there? Except it's like generally frowned upon these days. I'll do my quick tour of the of the cottage. Don't worry, mother, I'll, I'll keep your face out of it. What are we watching? Uh, no, me neither. I know uh, what's the name. Dawn French is in it. All right, this is the living room, and the TV, and the little fire, and the mirror. And then we come through here into the kitchen, and a nice fridge freezer, and the little French poster there. Got this today in Bakewell. Some sun-dried tomato sourdough. I'm drinking one of those very berries at the moment. Here we have a, a mirror, that's me. All of the all of the kitchen. Yesterday's beer, that's my mum's milk, obviously. <laughs> okay, and then we come through here. This is like the main, oh, jeez, dropped my books. This is the main thoroughfare. We come in this room. I already showed you this one, actually. This is my bedroom, still untidy. Didn't bother to make my bed, uh, yeah. Some clothes on the floor. Yes, got myself some Kendall mint cake, because I can eat that. Got some wool for my friend Fran from the art center, who has had her baby. I don't know if I remember to say that, but she has had her baby at a very bad time as well. I, I should message her actually and see if she's got home. I have some books here, nothing I'm particularly interested in. Um, by the time you see this, I'll be home, hopefully, assuming I can get home. So, um, it'll be too late for you to recommend them. All right, so this is the bedroom. You may recognize this backdrop because I filmed a few videos in here. Continue to meander along down here. You have my mum's room. We, hers is much tidier, wow, look at that. That's what this place is supposed to look like. And uh, then we have the bathroom with this cool light thing and a nice shower. Yep. And then, I'm not going to take you out through here, but yeah, we've got two doors. So this door takes you through there into like a little, you know, concourse. Is that the word? I don't know. It's where all the other, because there's, there's like apartments and there's like three other people here. Or, well, I don't know if there's anyone actually here, but there's three other doors. So you go out into that concourse bit and then, you know, out again through to the... Through to the front, so it's very nice. I, if I remember tomorrow, I'll get some exterior footage as well. Today we went into book. No, we went into Buxton yesterday. Today we went into Bakewell, home of the Bakewell tart, uh, which I cannot eat because they're not vegan. <laughs> but my mum got a slice of Bakewell cake or something, and uh, that from the place where I got my my sourdough from actually. So that's pretty good. I uh, went looking around the charity shop, so I got a few more bits which I will update you guys on in my haul. And yeah, we went for this little wander around, little walk along the river as well. I got some video clips. Um, obviously, not everywhere was open, and I mean, in one of the charity shops, they'd got like chairs pushed up in front of the desk to remind people to keep their distance from the cashiers and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sure like well, it's been in the news today. The latest coronavirus news in the UK. Uh, is the schools are closing except for the children of like necessary workers so the children of like delivery drivers uh, and you know anyone in the NHS policemen firemen uh, you know all that kind of stuff all the vital infrastructure stuff um, so they're gonna be fewer kids at school but the schools are still gonna stay open to keep those kids out because that way people can stay at work you know what I mean not everyone can work from home like I can that said ran out of work basically I've got two jobs left on and you got to bear in mind I'm on holiday I've, I've this week will have been a half week for me and I will still run out of work because 
coronavirus in it. Nobody's nobody's uh, nobody's hiring at the moment. Luckily, I do yeah have enough money for next month's rent. Month after that might be a problem. I had also booked an Asda shop to come uh, with my like delivery food, and the thing didn't go through, so I've lost my slot. And like there are literally no available slots. It goes up to I think like April the seventh, and they're all fully booked out. So I am going to have to, when I get back into Wickham, I'm going to have to go around to all the different supermarkets and just find what I can and uh, stock up. And it's really annoying as well because everyone, right, as a vegan, <laughs> everyone is always like constantly like, oh, I could never eat vegan food. And like, and the big question of like, oh yeah, like what happens if you're stuck on a desert island? What are you going to eat? Why are all the meat eaters buying all of the vegan food, all of the pasta, all of the spaghetti, all of the fruit and vegetables, <laughs> like the grains, the quinoas? Everything's gone. Even the soy milk's gone. It's like, oh, people don't have a problem now that it's actually a case of survival, you know? But hey-ho, maybe more people will try more vegan foods and then after this all, you know, sorts itself out, then they'll be slightly better. I mean, one of the things, one of the hopes is that, you know, people realise the good that it does. Like, if we're not travelling internationally and flights are grounded, people are staying at home, it's much better for the environment and you can actually see the effects that it's had on the environment already so hopefully it'll be a bit of a wake-up call really plus COVID-19 came from eating bats same as like SARS and MERS and all of those and like bird flu swine flu if we didn't eat animals and breed them in these situations where they're all like super concentrated we wouldn't have this problem but that's basically the plot of my novel meat which I'm currently editing actually there's some kind of funny quotes. I've actually edited in COVID-19. Originally in Meat, the outbreak on uh, the factory farm that kind of, this is what the novel's all about, a disease outbreak on a factory farm. And originally it was gonna be a weird strain of foot and mouth. It is now a hybrid mutation between foot and mouth and COVID-19, so there we go. <laughs> uh, what have I been reading? I haven't, got, I haven't actually read that much. I've been reading Devastation. Yes, Devastation by Stephen King. I'm about 80 odd pages of about 540 in. It's actually quite good so far. I'm kind of enjoying it, which is funny because I'm, I don't think I've heard anybody talk about this book. So I'm going to start my review of that shortly. So I think that's all updated. And at the moment, I'm just chilling in the living room with my mum. Tomorrow is our final day here. I don't know where we're going. We might be going to, did we say Matlock? I don't know where we're going. We're going somewhere tomorrow anyway. Um, taking advantage of the fact that places are still just about open. I mean, that's why I'm going around all the charity shops and buying books and vinyls so that if we do end up on lockdown, I have something to do. Hi. Hello, I am back home. We came back home a day early because, again, everything's going nuts. We're basically, the whole country is really meant to be, we've been advised not to go out, not to be in public spaces, not to do this, not do that. Um, everyone's off school apart from the children of emergency workers and like supermarket delivery people and stuff. Um, yeah, so I've been stocking up. I got the essentials. Look, I got an eight pack of Monster and some beer, five things of beer, big thing of tobacco, got all my books. Um, I'm currently dressed like this because I only have one heater in my house and it's uh, stopped working. It's, it's now just a fan. So, um, yeah, actually thinking about it, I was going to get rid of it, but maybe I'll keep it for the summer because it was blowing cold air at me. It's just it's cold in here already. So, yeah, I've ordered a new heater and hopefully it comes before something crazy happens like Royal Mail stops delivering. Um, I'm not sure what's happening with my radio show next week. That might still be happening, but with no guests on it. And, um, yeah, my book's going to come out, but Amazon are currently only delivering emergency, like, vital supplies. So you can't actually order, you won't be able to order the paperback. Um, unless things change, of course, but we will see. Anyway, so that's what's happening. So today I just travelled back and I'm currently unpacking and stuff and being productive. I'm watching Beyond Scared Straight and I'm still reading that Stephen King book that's over here, Desperation. It's quite good so far. It's alright. Yo, it is Friday the 20th of March. Oh, Tweet Deck is pinging at me, so I'm going to just close that. I'm also apparently on low battery, so I haven't worked this out too well because I was going to do some filming and she's. Maybe my other battery will work. Still reading Desperation. Um, over halfway through now, just about. Enjoying it still. Started my review and continued it and shit. Went out early because I had to post some stuff. Went to the pharmacy as well about my repeat prescription, but I apparently have to take it to my doctor's, but my doctor's is closed. 
Hello, so old Bojo, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, has delivered another update today. Hello, Biggie. And, um, yeah, all pubs and stuff are now legally have to close. A lot of them are closed anyway, to be honest. But, um, yeah, we're sort of slowly easing into lockdown, I think, really. I have all right supplies now, though. So, the, part, the only thing now that I need to go out for is the radio. And, again, as every new day passes, I'm still not sure whether it's going to go ahead. It doesn't really seem like the best time to launch a new show. I mean, if I was doing an existing show, it would make sense to carry on with it, you know? Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, I'll probably see what's happened by the end of the weekend and, and check with them then. Um, yeah, still reading Desperation. I'm doing my laundry in my own sink now because, well, yeah, everywhere's closing in it and it's just, yeah needs doing so why not i think that's all i've got for you because there's not really anything happening that i can update you on um i've been watching some youtube and now i will probably watch some more beyond scared straight and maybe listen to my audiobook of the stand oh and it's cover reveal today as well so i'm posting my cover reveal video in a little bit for the tower hill terror my new book the bad ones and we all knew this would be all right so i'm watching we murphy napier know. do her reading vlog um we're currently, Boris Johnson is currently giving a speech with an update on coronavirus. But because I don't have a TV license, I can't watch live TV. I can only watch like Netflix and YouTube. So I've got my mum and my friend giving me the updates. Apparently 5,683 cases in the UK, 281 deaths. I don't know whether we might have like further sanctions about whether we can go out and stuff. Um, or he might announce that something good for self-employed people, who knows. It is the 22nd of March, Sunday the 22nd. I went for a walk earlier, and as I did so, I uh, filled up my rucksack and stuff. I have plenty of food and shit now, I think. Although, I'm surprised by how much you get through in 24 hours. Oh, Biggie's here. Hey, Biggie. Um, I finished reading Desperation by Stephen King. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5. Full review coming soon. But as you can tell, I enjoyed it. And uh, now I've started reading Birthday Letters by Ted Hughes. And um, yeah, I'll be doing a full review of this as well. It's Ted Hughes's poetry. And yeah, most of it's about Sylvia Plath. So I'm kind of enjoying it because of that. So that's where we're at. And um, yeah, this evening I might have a few beers and play some guitar and maybe do some recording. I've been doing my laundry as well. And um, oh yeah, and I've been editing my book, Meat, which is set on a factory farm, which ironically, or not ironically, but you know, fittingly, there's a big quarantine in it. Um, so I've been editing that and I've almost finished. I'll probably finish the first round of editing today and then that can go back to my editor. Uh, and then I'm gonna crack on with some rewrites on uh, Jailed, which is the third book in the Lightfold series and it's a short story collection. So anyway, that's where we're at. As always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.